I've spent way too much money chasing the perfect setup and it's safe to say I am a peripheral addict. But apparently, I'm not the only one who cares about this stuff because whether it's on stream, in YouTube comments or on Discord, people keep asking me. Bailey, what mouse do you use? What are your monitor settings? Or whatever this is. And after years of testing different stuff, I believe I've finally found my ultimate setup. So today it's time to nerd out a bit and show you my CS2 setup and explain why I use the things I use. By the way, I'm not sponsored by any of those companies, so no bias here. Let's start with the thing you're probably most interested in. My extremely big muscular biceps. Yeah, okay, let's start with my mouse. I've tried a lot of them, man. My first ever gaming mouse, while well, calling it a mouse would be a big compliment, more like a brick, was the bloody A4. It's really good if you want to stay stuck in level 5 forever. Then came the Logitech G Pro and let me tell you, that thing was life-changing. If you've never tried a good wireless mouse, it makes gaming feel enjoyable on a whole nother level. That said, my current mouse still has a wire. Yeah, in the big 2025. Not only that, but I can also comfortably say that the OP18K 8 is the best mouse I have ever tried. 8000Hz polling rate, below 50 grams and the lowest click latency out there. Even the stock cable is good enough. With a bungee, you barely feel it. Just a month ago though, I actually decided to mod my OP1. So now this thing is around 30 grams instead of 50, and it has a thinner, almost power cord looking cable. I will be reviewing it on my channel, so subscribe if you don't want to miss it, because it's coming soon, and trust me, it will be worth it. I've also tried Death Adder and Viper V3 Pros, both felt amazing, and the Superlight V2, which, if I'm being honest, isn't that super light at all. But they all had one flaw, shape. None of them fit me as comfortably as the OP1. For reference, I've got pretty average sized hands and a grip like you see on the screen. So if you like smaller mice, use a fingertip grip, definitely keep the OP1 8K on your radar. But also, there are so many good mice out there now, and we've technologically come to a point where most mainstream mice have insane internals and your choice should come down mostly to the shape that fits your grip style best. Oh, and the bungee I have is the Extrify B4, if anyone's wondering, but honestly just use whichever one you have. If you're overthinking your mouse bungee, then sorry to break it to you, but there's no saving you. But even the best mouse needs to have the right mouse pad to slide on. And that's where you might get a little surprised. I am not like all the other TAC FPS players and I don't main a cloth pad. <gasps> to me, most cloth pads feel muddy, inconsistent and too slow. That's why last summer I switched to a glass pad, and specifically Wallhacks Skypad 4.0. And oh boy, I couldn't stop improving. I even hit my peak of top 500 EU on Faceit while using it. The only cloth pad that came close to my experience with the Skypad was the Artisan Raiden. I even made a whole video comparing these two together. But any control pad, like the SteelSeries QCK or Artisan Zero, just felt unusable to me after a while because I felt like they slowed me down too much. So I tried glass as kind of a meme, but it turned out to be one of the best decisions I've made for my gameplay. The glide is literally life-changing when coming from cloth. The consistency is unreal, it never slows down and you wipe it every now and then, boom it's brand new again. Now obviously it's not perfect, it's a bit loud, becomes super cold in winter and for the first week of using it I was overshooting everything. But once you get used to it, you'll never want to switch back. Spoiler, this pad doesn't actually give you wohack, but it definitely gives you secondhand embarrassment from the cringe brand name. And obviously I got it in white to match my OP18K. And if you also want your CS2 inventory to match, you should definitely check out SkinsMonkey. SkinsMonkey is an automated trading site where you can instantly swap your old skins for new ones. Just pick the skins that you want, wait for the offer, and boom, now you're fully fresh. Psst. Hey you, I got something for you. With my code BAILY, you can get up to $5 for free just by trading. And if you need extra balance for your trade, the same code also gives you a 35% deposit bonus. On top of that, there's 24-7 live chat support, filters to find the exact skins you want, and even free giveaways if you're feeling lucky. Use the link in the description to get to SkinsMonkey, and I want to thank them for sponsoring this video. What does a big biceps, a handsome boyfriend and a good keyboard have in common? Huh? These are one of the very few things that can actually give you a real competitive advantage in FPS games. I've been a wooting enjoyer since 2023, but recently the D key on my 60HE started acting up in some scenarios, so I had to replace it with a different keyboard. And I chose Monsgeek's Fun60. 
Some of you might have already heard about this one since it's pretty popular in the niche because of the tag that it uses. I'm really not trying to get into all the technical details about the difference. Wooting keyboards use Hall Effect while the Fun60 uses TMR. But just know that both these keyboards are way better than the standard mechanical switch thanks to the custom actuation point and something called Rapid Trigger, which basically means the key can reset and activate again without needing to bottom it out. So in simple terms, it should mean faster counter strafes, smoother movement and less delay. Between Hall Effect and TMR, TMR, I honestly can't tell a difference, both are insanely responsive, even though TMR is supposed to be the superior technology. And the Fun60 is a good keyboard, it feels nice to play on and even better to type, but the software is absolutely dog water and the rapid trigger implementation also feels off. Sometimes my keys just didn't register at all. The build quality though is insane. It's the heaviest board I've ever used, it's built like a tank and feels super premium. But yeah, unfortunately, as someone who literally only cares about performance, I'm not entirely sure I can recommend this one. By the way, can someone please explain to me the phenomenon of the Logitech G Pro X? It seems like just another mid keyboard. No custom actuation point, no rapid trigger, and yet it costs almost as much as a Wooting which has both of these features, and more. Oh, and did I forget to mention that Donk, Kyosuke and Monesi all use it? Like, come on, I get being sponsored by a company, but they are literally playing for millions of dollars. You'd think they'd want a keyboard with at least some of the best features in it. But no, they use the Logitech one. It seems crazy to me, but maybe someone can explain it. That said, if you have the funds and want the best experience, I would still recommend going for a Wooting board. That's why I ended up sending this one to my friend and replacing it with the Wooting ADHE. I hadn't used an 80% layout since 2022 and it honestly feels so good. I really missed having the F keys and arrows, especially for some productivity tasks, so I'm definitely not switching anytime soon. And if you don't want to spend that much on a keyboard, you can find insanely cheap Hall Effect boards everywhere. So if you're not already using one, you're missing out on a pretty substantial advantage, at least in theory. We've covered the hands fully, now let's move to the second part of the coordination, our eyes. And let me tell you, this is probably the only peripheral from today that I regret buying. My current monitor is Asus PG27 AQDP. And if you don't already know this one, listen closely, because it's a 1440p, 480Hz OLED panel. Can I glaze it even more? Yes, when I'm looking at the screen, my eyes literally get a better experience than whenever I go outside. So many people call it the perfect monitor. And since good marketing clearly works on me, I instantly got hooked. And to be fair, they were kind of right. In-game it looks super clean, there's no ghosting and motion blur is minimal. Even with all that, I don't know if I'm the weird one here, but I actually preferred my Zowie. It was a 360Hz 1080p TN panel, so on paper it loses in every category to the PG27 AQDP, but those Zowie monitors are just peak gaming experience for CS2. There's just something about them that makes you feel so locked in at the game. I was also a huge fan of those side panels, they made me instantly focus on the match and nothing else. That's why I said I regret buying the Asus. In theory, it seems perfect, but in practice, it's hardly an upgrade. The 27 inch size compared to the 24 feels a bit awkward, and overall it just doesn't give me that same, let's call it, tournament feel like the Zowie did. And honestly, people keep saying that the jump from 1080p to 1440p is the best upgrade they've ever made, but I feel like I could easily go back. I got peer pressured into buying this thing, so if you're unsure about buying a new monitor, you might need to hear this. Your monitor is fine, don't waste money upgrading it. Unless you're still on something below 144Hz, then yeah, go ahead, do it for your eyes. So TLDR, the Asus looks prettier, but for CS2 specifically, the Zoe still feels unbeatable to me. And if you were wondering, here are all of my settings on this monitor.
The last thing I want to cover are headphones. Not that long ago I switched from your typical gamer headphones like HyperX Clouds or SteelSeries Arctis Pros to Sennheiser's HD 560S. These are open back headphones, which means I basically hear everything that's going on around me just like I would without wearing any. At first it was a strange experience streaming, talking to the chat or teammates and hearing your own voice in the process, but you adjust really quickly. I don't notice it at all nowadays. Now I really hope no audiophile watches this part because I'm about to say something that might trigger some people, I didn't notice a huge difference in sound quality. Yeah, they sound really good, but honestly those gamer headsets were already good enough for CS2, music, YouTube, anything. I only switched to them because my last headphones broke and I wanted something without a built-in mic. Everyone online was hyping the HD 560S, so I decided to give them a shot. And they're a great pair of headphones. They're super comfortable, they sound great, my ears never get tired from them, and if you like open back designs, you will love them. But if you're just playing CS2 and don't care about soundstage, or whatever audiophiles say, you really don't need to overthink your headphones. Unless you're playing on something like this. But if you truly do care about audio quality, you should definitely check out Sonar. It's a free tool that instantly improves your sound quality with custom EQ. Plus, if you want to grab some of the gear I mentioned earlier, you can get 20% off anything on the SteelSeries website with code BILY20. I just thought that might be useful for some of you. Now let me quickly run through my PC specs. My CPU is the 7800X3D, with PBO set to minus 25. This one is pretty straightforward. If you're not using an X3D chip for CS2, you're leaving a big chunk of performance on the table. Nothing else even comes close to AMD in that regard. I've also got a Gigabyte 5070 Ti, which is undervolted. And yeah, you definitely need a stronger GPU for CS2 than you did for CSGO. It actually does make a noticeable difference. And here's my motherboard, RAM and the power supply. And before you ask, yes, 650 watts is enough with PBO enabled and an undervolted GPU. I've not had a single issue so far, so it's safe to say that 650 watts is indeed enough. If anyone is curious about my camera and microphone, I'm using the Elgato Facecam MK2 and the Sennheiser Profile. But even with all this yapping about my setup, I reached level 10 back in CSGO on a 60Hz monitor, using a 70g mouse on a random mousepad and a subpar PC. I'm saying this to illustrate one thing, gear comes second. What really matters in a game like Counter-Strike are your skills, so don't go down the rabbit hole trying to chase the endgame setup. Use what you like and stick with it. Don't be like me, constantly switching things up. Because upgrading your mouse won't make you a pro player, but working on your mechanics definitely will. And if you want to become better at CS2, this channel is exactly where you want to be. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.